Today we're talking about one of the cheapest and easiest ways to speed up your edits. Coming up next. Take a minute to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos. A quick like, comment, or sharing this video really does make a huge difference. Thanks for helping out. I'm assuming most of us have spent more time behind a computer keyboard this year than the mixing boards we're used to working on. Even after long days of editing though, with your workflow dialed in, there is still one thing that slows me down more than anything else when I'm working in software with repeated shortcuts, and that's the lack of tactile feedback. Being able to keep your eyes on the screen and your focus on what you're trying to accomplish is huge for keeping momentum and staying in the flow of a project for me. I use a lot of shortcuts and find myself working much faster when I have some landmarks to anchor from. Remembering the shortcuts isn't too hard. For learning them, I really enjoy these skins that you can get that have all the shortcuts laid out for you to see. But once you know the shortcuts that you use most often, it's about providing a reference point you don't have to constantly look for. You'll still use your peripheral vision, but we can make that easier too. With a bit more attention to how you typically use your shortcuts, we can also make common repeated moves much easier to move through quickly. This might not look like much, but these little bits of foam stuck onto these specific 16 keys make a massive difference for me. The keys you'll need will probably be different depending on the software you use the most, but there are some common keys that you'll probably want. Control, Option, and Command modifiers on the left side are super important in almost all software. Making them different shapes makes it really easy to know exactly where your left hand is. Likewise, the letter V. For Adobe software and for Final Cut Pro, V is a very common key alone and also with those modifiers. The letters J, K, and L are commonly used for scrubbing through your media. I mark the Option key as well on the right side of the keyboard, which I mostly use for keyframing in Final Cut using Option and that letter K. This is enough for me to find my way around the right modifiers, only having the one mark on the Option key, and uh, makes it really easy to land your hand back there without looking. You might notice that I've marked the escape key and the number one keys. I don't use those a ton in video editing, but number one and uh, those number keys are really important to choosing tools in Studio One from PreSonus. And the escape key is a really good one to mark, just gives you a reference for the upper extent of the keyboard so you can get there really fast. A few more that have been a big game changer for me have been marking and using the home end keys as well as the page up and page down keys. Function 16 and 17 on this particular keyboard are also mapped to zoom in and out, which I use a ton. These are all marked with shapes that are used to reference exactly which key I'm pressing without having to look at it. For anyone who's wondering, this is a Macaulay model MVKEYB keyboard. They're really cheap and they also make them for Windows machines. I tried a ton of other keyboards and these really are the ones that I prefer. My original one has held up so far for a good couple of years of very heavy use and I've had no issues. And that's better than I can say for my favorite A1243 keyboards from Apple, uh, but I've promised myself not to buy any more of those because I've gone through a number of them over the years as keys continually fail. This one here has a bad left command key, making it pretty much useless for any type of editing. So that's it. It's really simple. I use these cheap adhesive backed foam sheets that you can get in the craft aisle at Walmart or most art supply shops. You can go nuts. You can make really specific shapes and definitely don't be afraid to experiment and pull them off and change what doesn't work. I'd really suggest starting with just a few, maybe the modifiers and then adding the different keys that you identify needing as you go. Now you're all set to move much faster between shortcuts and waste less time looking away from your screen hunting down the key combinations. A really important part of placing these and choosing the shape you use is to pay attention to what shortcuts you're coming from to get to each shortcut typically. Like I said, I'd use option K a lot to create those uh, keyframes 
and typically I'm going to be doing that with my left hand coming from the other side of the keyboard. You can see how the home and end keys, for example, provide a really logical feeling start and finish shape that I can quickly move my hand over to and feel exactly where I am without having to look. Pay attention to how your hands move naturally as you work for a few minutes and set up those foam blocks to act as backstops so you know exactly where your hand is landing and then you'll spend less time thinking about it. It'll become very natural and editing on a keyboard like this Apple one without any markers uh, will be a real challenge in the future. That's all for now. Thanks for watching this really quick one and I'll see you again very soon.